Hi, Chris Martin here in the Martin Museum at the Martin Guitar Factory in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. I'm a big fan of anniversaries, always looking to see what we can celebrate in terms of our rich history and heritage. Last year was our 190th year, so that's something we celebrated last year. So I was thinking, what can we do? What can we do this year to celebrate an anniversary? And I don't want to be selfish, but I came to the realization that on April 1st, 2024, I will be celebrating my 50th year with the Martin Guitar Company. Yes, I started young. Um, I actually became what, I, what would be called a full-time employee during college. And I had quit college, come back to work in the factory. My parents were divorced, so I didn't grow up in the family business. And I really felt like I needed to get a better understanding of how the Martin guitar was made. And so April 1st, April Fool's Day was my first day of work, full time. I had been working in the summers, you know, part time, 50 years ago this year. So what could we do to, to celebrate that event? There aren't a lot of Martin employees that get to 50 years. Walter Lambert. Martin Craftsman, someone I knew and had a great deal of respect for, celebrated 50 years with the company. And there have been several other individuals over time. So this year it's my turn. So I thought, okay, what did we do that was successful that we should redo to celebrate my 50th anniversary? Sort of following on with last year, it was the 190th anniversary. What could we do to celebrate 190 years? So we did the D19. And then I'm like, wait a minute, we made a D50. Why don't we just reintroduce the idea of the D50? And so with the help of my colleagues, that's what we did. And here it is. Very similar to the previous D50. We did not, we chose not to put the inlay, particularly around here. And the reason was, Right here, when we would do the inlay, and we would try and line it up with the inlay on the sides, that was really challenging, really challenging in the shop. And so I quickly acquiesced and said, look, it's not worth it. It's not worth the hassle, the trouble, to have to like super hand fit each one of these. Let's forego that. But other than that, very similar to the original D50, which we made 50 of and sold over time. This, this is a big deal guitar. This guitar requires a lot of work, a lot of care, and we're gonna keep it in the line until we sell all 50. D50. And then I thought, okay, are there any other important anniversaries coming up this year? This year, we're celebrating 35 years of making instruments and instrument strings in Navajoa, Sonora, Mexico. 35 years ago, we started with strings. It worked, then we went with the Backpacker, then the X-Series. Today we're making solid wood guitars down there. I'm so proud of the work they do. So why not also do a Navajoa anniversary model to celebrate my 50 years with the company and my being part of participating in the decision, the decision that was not easy 35 years ago, to say, let's take a chance and open up a second manufacturing site in Mexico. And it worked. We still have some coworkers that are, have been with us since the first day we started that business 35 years ago. And so in honor of my 50th anniversary with the company and Navajoa's 35 years of being a partner to, well, making all of our strings and making what I like to say is your first Martin. You know, I would love your first Martin to be a D50. Probably not gonna be. So your first Martin is probably, possibly something that we made in Navajoa. So this one's pretty special. This is the most ornate guitar we've ever built in Navajoa. Check out the quilted Sapili. The funny thing about Sapili is it's, it's, a, it's a mahogany substitute and it's often used, not just by us, but by other guitar builders with a matte finish. 
so that you can offer a really good value. Because when you put a glossy finish on the guitar, that really jacks up the price, it's a lot more work. But when you do a matte finish on the Sapili, you lose all that. But when you put a glossy finish on a piece of figured Sapili, it's pretty spectacular. Tree of Life fingerboard up into the head plate. And, okay, so, a couple of years ago, when was it? Business was tough. It might have been 2008, I can't remember. And we ended up with more inventory than we needed and not enough cash. We weren't out of cash, but we got squeezed a little and Christmas was coming. And I thought, oh boy, you know, business is challenging. I don't know. What, what kind of a message are we saying when we're, when we're not working overtime and yet we can, you know, give you a Christmas bonus? I want to give you a Christmas bonus. And so I thought, this year, your Christmas bonus is going to be a guitar. So it was the LX1, right? I, I said, let's, because we had a lot of them in stock. I said, why don't we give everyone an LX1? Who doesn't want a free guitar, right? Even if you don't want it, you give it, it's Christmas, you give it to a friend or a relative as a gift. And I said, I'll sign them all. So I come to work, and outside of my office are 50 LX1s on the floor with loose strings. And I go, Mary, what's that? She goes, what do you mean, what's that? Those are the LX1s that you said you would sign for all the coworkers for Christmas. I said, oh yeah, that's right. Well, it wasn't 50, it was 500. And I did it. It was kind of fun. A little carpal, tu carpal tunnel in my hand. It was a bit challenging to reach down in there and sign my name. And every now and then when I would sign the guitar, I would look at it and go, oh my goodness, that has a spectacularly beautiful top on it. So I mentioned to Jen, I said, Jen. She said, oh yeah, once in a while, you know, we get a big pile of tops and we just use them. We use them and once in a while they have all this figure on them. I said, Jen, those are special. Why don't you put them aside and we'll save them for a special project. And this is the special project. Check out that top. Now everyone is not going to look like this. In fact, no other one of these is gonna look exactly like this. But we are going through the wood, the tops, and the necks. This neck has a little flame in it. We're gonna try and get some flame on the neck. So this is a very cool guitar. On the one hand, it's the most expensive guitar we've ever built in Navajo. On the other hand, when you look at what you're getting, it's a really good value. Hope you like it. Thanks.